new videos every day. Hi, I'm Roddy Iglese. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist. And if this is the first time you're joining us on this series, be sure you go to my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com. Uh, you can download the metabolic assessment questionnaire next to any of the videos on that site. And you can fill them out and follow along to see if you have any of the metabolic imbalances we'll be talking about or that we've been talking about in the past. Uh, you can go back through the Psyche Truth archives uh, just by searching Radia or How the Body Works series on this homepage and find out, um, you know, go along with the metabolic questionnaire and listen to the other topics. All right, the questionnaire looks at a variety of signs and symptoms that may have their root in nutritional imbalances and deficiencies. I use this questionnaire in conjunction with nutritional ranges in your blood test. So today I'm going to tell you a, a little bit about nutritional blood assessment. All right, now a regular blood test can real, uh, reveal significant information which can be used to, uh, to guide someone like me or a trained practitioner to plan an effective wellness program for your precise needs. This is known as science-based nutrition, which is guided by your own blood test and is the new standard for developing a comprehensive and personalized health and wellness program. What you do not need to do is overload your system with inappropriate or unnecessary nutrients, which can result in unwanted complications. So what is blood nutrition? Well, first, what is blood chemistry? Usually done every year at an annual physical, your doctor generally uses a blood test to look at cholesterol through a lipids panel, thyroid, uh, liver and kidney, white and red blood cells through a CBC, blood sugar and other values. This is universally accepted. However, the problem is, is that doctors use a very wide range, what we call a pathological range based on the general population. So these ranges are set by the lab that the doctor uses. So when you get the test back, the ranges are generally determined by the mean of the population coming into that particular lab. So in most cases, these people are either coming from doctor's offices or hospitals. So you're being compared to a range of sick people. But if you know what to look for in, these, in this blood work, you can identify nutritionally significant information in what we call a healthy range of your blood test. This is called the nutritional range or functional range. You can detect patterns which have nutritional significance, such as deficiencies and excesses of nutrients, electrolytes, mineral imbalances, etc. Once addressed, one can optimize the metabolic processes and help maintain the healthy performance of the body. A balanced nutritional state is essential in maintaining health. So let's look at the nutritional model versus the disease model. Take diabetes 2, for example. Let's look at the pathological ranges. First of all, fasting glucose is above 127. Uh, commonly takes years to develop. Treatment is either medication and lifestyle changes after the diabetic has been diagnosed. The nutritional range, however, is the pre-diabetes high blood sugar range, which is fasting glucose just above 100. Cholesterol uh, will go up, triglycerides often will be up first, and by seeing this way in advance, you can promote healthy blood sugar levels by finding the nutritional needs and applying appropriate diet, nutritional supplements, and lifestyle changes to prevent diabetes in the future. I always say, <laughs> don't wait until the horse is out of the barn. Do something beforehand. Uh, your blood test may indicate the need for vitamins such as B12, B6, vitamin D, and A. 
uh, minerals like iron, fluid and electrolytes, uh, electrolyte balances like calcium, potassium, minerals such as magnesium, uh, mineral balances, tissue hydration, antioxidants, uh, enzymes, supporting absorption of nutrients, nutritional support of key organs, nutritional support of metabolic pathways, and certain biochemical activities. Also other key nutrients that we know how to, uh, to look for. Now don't misunderstand me, most of the time there are exceptions, but we're not testing specifically uh, for nutrients in the blood. In other words, the blood does whatever it takes to maintain homeostasis. So calcium, for example, an important alkalinizing mineral, um, would show up within range most of the time because in order for the body to maintain that homeostasis, it'll rob the bone to maintain pH balance. Uh, you'd have to be in severe depletion, a pathological crisis for it to show up, uh, calcium to show up low in the blood. However, by looking at certain markers in the blood, we know that there are signs of deficiency. For example, if the MCV and MCHs, et cetera, are high, this is a clear marker for B12 folic acid deficiency. Or if the alkaline phosphatase is low, that's a marker for zinc deficiency. On the other hand, blood serum tests such as the 25-OH vitamin D is quite accurate in determining D deficiencies. Symptoms may be caused by two different factors, nutritional imbalances or disease processes. Nutritional imbalances may cause reduced functionality, reduced energy and vitality, feelings of discomfort, or more pronounced symptoms. Therefore, such symptoms are not necessarily caused by dysfunction or disease, but rather are results of either systemic stress caused by nutritional depletion, or a reduction, uh, reduced availability of nutrients in relationship to the demands placed on the body. In other words, depending on your age, your sex, your lifestyle, stressors, etc., these factors place various demands on your nutritional requirements. The reflection of imbalances in your functional blood ranges is the body telling you it needs more of certain nutrients to perform according to the demands of your stress lifestyle. On the other hand, many nutritional deficiencies are in fact the result of disease processes, which may be blocking digestion, absorption, and other metabolic processes. So nutritional supplementation in such cases does not address the disease, but may reduce deficiencies caused by it, and thus result in improving of symptoms. In this case, for lasting results, underlining disease must be, must be addressed. Blood nutrition analysis helps to objectively identify nutritionally significant information from your blood test and direct appropriate nutrients to support health and nutritional balance. In short, it takes the guesswork out of what's good for you. It objectively targets nutrients to the needs of your body and may prepare you for, you know, uh, better, uh, it, it may prepare you better to fight metabolic imbalances and future stresses. It also ensures that you don't overload your system with unnecessary nutrients, which in most cases the body simply has to eliminate. So let's talk about dietary supplementation. For those of you who are opposed to dietary supplements, I invite you to consider all the factors. Every body is different. I, uh, I oftentimes get diet zealots who get offended whenever someone mentions dietary supplements. Some people believe that you can get all your nutrients from your food. Well, that may be possible and obviously most optimal. However, it depends on major individual factors and circumstances. So how do you know if you don't test? Like I said, at the very beginning of this series, uh, in the first episode um, of How the Body Works, which is the name of the series, it's not just eating good food, remember, it's how well do you digest, absorb, 
utilize on a cellular level and eliminate metabolic wastes. So you're only as strong as your weakest link. Uh, so you eat good food, but you don't digest it well because maybe you're over the age of 50 and you don't produce a strong gastric juice. We call it, remember, hypochlorhydria. And, or you've depleted your stores of digestive enzymes because you've eaten a lifetime uh, of cooked and processed foods. Okay, for all you raw food zealots out there, you may come back to me and say, well, go on an all root raw food diet and you'll get your live enzymes. Well, that may not be practical or appropriate. As a matter of fact, it's 28 degrees here in Austin today, and under that circumstance alone, I don't recommend that you eat an all raw food diet. Besides, there is advantages to eating cooked food, especially if your gastrointestinal tract is weak or compromised. Iron, for example, is easier to absorb and digest from cooked spinach than raw spinach. Remember, every body is different. Supposing you're one of the many people who genetically do not absorb and produce B12 in the gut. How do you know unless you test? What are your sources of these nutrients? Sources for B12, for example, are fish, organ meats like liver, red meat, and some fortified cereals. Do you eat those every day? And how much do you need to eat? And even if you ate nothing but liver all day long, are you even absorbing the B12? How do you know? Depending on where you are in the country and the availability of certain foods depends on your dietary nutrient access. Did you know that most food grown in the US today is very low in the mineral chromium, which is a key component to blood sugar regulation? Did you know that California carrots have the highest amount of beta carotene in the country? But conventionally grown foods grown in minerally depleted soil uh, due to erosion and the use of chemical fertilizers instead of crop rotation may not provide you with adequate amounts of needed nutrients. How do you know without testing? During the winter, there isn't enough sun to get proper amounts of vitamin D. There's a veritable epidemic of vitamin D in this country and why I believe we have so many colds and flus during the winter. I automatically do a 25 OH vitamin D test with all of my clients and virtually every test I see is low in vitamin D. Depending on your age and stress levels will determine how much vitamin C in your body you require. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin and it needs to be replenished regularly. You may have enough today, but tomorrow it's an extremely stressful day. One good adrenaline rush, for example, will deplete your vitamin C stores. So if you get cut off on the freeway, whammo. I could go on and on, you know, citing example after example, but I think you get the point. Every body is different. So for more information on all of this, go to my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com, and take a look at my short video on blood nutrition. And don't forget to do the free metabolic assessment questionnaire. Well, that's all for today. So be sure if you haven't already subscribed to Psyche Truth, um, subscribe now and I'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.